of World Game Changers. And today we are welcoming Amir Khan, the founder and general partner of Marl 5G Accelerator. Thank you so much, man, for being here. Thank you so much, Guillermo. I've known you for a long time. I'm glad that we could do this today and we are here today. I'm happy to help, happy to, part, be, happy to be a part of this Startup Grind initiative and World Game Changer uh, community. That's awesome, man. And I'm really sorry that we couldn't host you in Ecuador last year, but at least this time we get to share your story with our global community. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, immigrants here in this country in time it takes a thing like a toll and uh, I'm glad and we'll be traveling um, and hopefully I get an opportunity to go one more time to Ecuador things still down here I'm happy and I'm looking forward to it yeah of course let's let's do it next year and then I'll, yes. I'll tap along uh, to your trips in Latin America okay Good man idea. so uh, I would love to start by sharing how did your startup journey began uh, and how? Oh, God. Uh, I always wanted to be a startup guy. And I think this is 2012 and 13. I was exploring different ideas. We were making applications for restaurant delivery apps. We were making restaurant website applications. We explored so many ideas and we failed miserably in quite a by not finding a right product market fit. And then came along around 2014, and a friend of mine invited me to a contest at Bank of the West. They were holding internal contest about innovation in banking sector. And this was like early on fintech era. And my friend and I, we pitched this software about uh, uh, digital framework for front end framework for all these lending applications and banking applications, which didn't exist back then. And if you had to go for, um, go for a business loan or any kind of larger loan more than a credit card, even some credit cards, you have to go to bank's uh, branch, you have to sign up all that paperwork and all the other crap and give you take you a few days. Uh, we wanted to automate all that and kind of create that, which kind of took a really amazing turn. Uh, banks really loved that what we were doing, especially there, there used to be about 12,000 small banks in the US. Uh, 12,000 plus, now they're around 10,000 and M&A activity is a lot in that area. So we were, they were, we were a hit in those banks. So we, we, at our peak time, we had about 36 mid to large size banks, 98 plus uh, wow. private lenders on our platform. Uh, yeah, that was a three year of my journey. And, and, you know, it's one of an amazing and important journey in every person's life. Your emotions are going at a roller coaster. Uh, one day you're sad, one day you're happy. Um, I've learned a lot. I've learned to control my emotions now these days. So, Yeah, we talked about this last year and I, I actually remember your answer, but I want to ask you again, do you miss being a startup founder? I do. I, I really do. Actually, it's a, it's a fun, it's a, it's a, it's a fun environment. It's a fast paced environment. It is environment of making mistakes and fixing them again, every split second, split seconds. Um, hey, to be said, to be, to said that I am not really ready to hang my towel yet. So <laughs> there may be an opportunity to, to, you know, in next upcoming year, you never know. I'm, you know, I'm always working on a few things, you know, whatever pans out, well, we shall, you shall see. I actually love the stories from BCs going back to being founders. And I think that that's like an amazing journey, uh, to go through. And, uh, I would love to know from this. Uh, first company, how how was like the time lapse in order to become a VC, and what it inspired you to establish Marl Five G Accelerator? Eventually, you know, after an exit of mine due to the co-founder split, uh, we had an exit of investment bank. I was there for about two years, okay, and really doing this nine to five job of raising large amount of equity for 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 companies. And then U.S. Capital Global is one of the top banks, uh, like technology investment banks in the world. They have multiple offices around the world. So managing that side, it was super fun experience. But after a while, it was always about taking bank side versus a founder side. And I always found myself on that part of uh, the uh, that part of that side. So always had that situation in my brain. It's like, OK, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, 
So one day I just figured I, I, I don't belong in the world of bankers and I am not a banker. So I decided to leave and I took three months to figure out what to do. And a friend of mine, a friend, a mentor of mine gave me an advice. I think you love working with founders. Why don't you become a VC and do that for long term? So you can not only just support one company, you can have multiple companies that you can support at the same time and outcomes are amazing at the end of our company and yourself. So then Marl Accelerator came along. I went to the VCs who funded me initially, my first company. I went, I always said I went there for advice. I came back with a check. So I think that's how, that's how Marl Accelerator all formed. Yes. And now we are about five years, four and a half years in nine cohorts, 80 plus portfolio companies. Around wow. The yeah, it's insane. It's a lot of work. A lot of good work, but my co-founder Prakash and I saw, myself have done a lot of work on this. So I actually did some research and I, I found out that you had invested in like 60 plus companies, but yeah. wow, over 80? That's a lot, man. Yeah, 60 plus was before, now it's over 80. <laughs> do you do you remember your first investment? Yeah, uh, I, I personally, I, I mean, I've invested a couple of companies, but uh, my first, our first batch of investment is always going to be near and dear to my heart. And uh, I mean, I, I really, really like one of the companies that we like not to say I don't like others, but one of my oldest companies that I invested in Display Ride, and they are solving crucial problem, which was found, uh, driver and passenger safety in Uber, which is such a it's such a such a no brainer, right? Everyone like Uber should be looking after that uh, as a marketplace. Uh, they should provide the safety and security. But hey, providing online security is different, but actually on the ground, it's whole different things when you have scaling at the space where you have your operation in 35 to 80 different countries, it's hard to maintain that operation integrity and safety of people. So wow. the company Display Ride uh, provides, is, is built a ride share monitoring platform. And to this day, uh, hundreds of Uber, hundreds of thousands of Uber drive, Uber driver around the world use that solution. It is. It just puts in a device in their camera. It's not dash cam. It automatically integrates with Uber backend and Lyft backend and monitors and record all that data. And just any incident, you just need to click one button and everything is sorted out with Uber people. That's quite amazing. Yeah. Do you do you actually remember how you felt when you uh, told these founders like, hey, you're getting uh, a check from from Mar 5G? Um, I'm contemplating a lot, you know, one of the first investment you do, you make sure that you do, you, you're doing it right one, like, that's a kind of a, such a big step. I did about three calls with, with, uh, SME experts. I did a call with Uber expert, the Uber, I did a call with Volvo, one of my, one of my uh, mentors, his name is Pratik Budev. He reads a Volvo, like entire global division of car investments. So I didn't like, you know, I chatted with him and, and it was always like, Yes, it's good, but you have to understand this, the risk at the stage it comes, right? At the early stage, the risk is a huge risk. So, you know, I decided to take that risk and I told them and they were very happy. And to this day, Naveen and Abdul are good friends. Uh, I support them still. Um, they came up with the new products now. So they're in a scaling mode and we always help and support them to this day, even though they don't need us as much anymore. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm always amazed by the mindset of the VCs, you know, I mean, you're all of you are always like so helpful and always like sharing knowledge. I remember that when we talked last year, uh, I was about to like deploy some equity free capital for, for local funders. And you told me like, Hey, don't go like all the way. Just like try to narrow it down and just like start helping as many as you can. And they all will be like grateful. And that's actually what happened. So, so we deployed capital last year. And it was completely equity free and right. people were so happy to be part of that. And I, I always remember like your advice, like just try to help as many as possible. And before like getting ahead of myself, I would love for you to share about your investment thesis at Mar 5G. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll actually, let me go back and answer your question. Right. Uh, I think our conversation, I clearly remember we were sitting outside Startup Grind as we met uh, at that event. And the conversation was, how do you incubate an ecosystem? And an incubating ecosystem is not just done by a small here, check, here, check, here, there. 
No, you have to incubate the ecosystem at grassroots level by doing the bottom line investment on as many founders as possible. So the outcomes are, I mean, there's always an outcomes that like, you know, are divided by 10 generally, an outcome, one, 10, one, 10, 100. So if you are seeding that 100 plans, you know 10 of these plans will make it really well. So that's really at the grassroots investment level. So going, going back to that, sorry, I got sidetracked. What was the question? Uh, can you share your investment thesis at Marl 5G? Yes. Marl 5G, uh, we started the 5G accelerator. 5G rollout has worldwide been delayed since COVID. So we actually kind of went through pivot to more of a normal deep tech accelerator. Um, so we invest in B2B SaaS and B2B has uh, software as a service, hardware as a service companies worldwide. Um, as long as you are in the sector of mobility, autonomous, robotics, logistics, cybersecurity, um, and um, general AI, you know, those are the things that we do. Uh, you have to be solving it. It cannot be an app. You have to be solving a real business problem that exists. And that's what we really care about. Those are the companies we love. And founders, uh, you know, from day one, day zero, come talk to me. Oh, that's awesome. So what, what would you say are like the unique challenges faced by startups working on 5G related innovations and deep tech? Deep tech is, is, is uh, the right word is like, you know, 5G or not, 5G is one component of it. Let's talk about general deep tech, right? General deep tech is, is such a technical, uh, such a technical do ex domain. Uh, startups coming out of it needs a lot more capital, like a general SaaS company, right? Uh, back in when Google started out, back then you needed the cloud server, you need not cloud, sorry, cloud server right there. You need the server racks, you need all the networking, you need yeah, everything, all the crap you needed. So now with AWS, as a software company, you don't need anything. A software founder can use a laptop and make a billion dollar company, and people have done that now successfully, especially with the age of AI we live in automation. But but deep tech and, and hard tech companies, they still need that R and D. You know, if you are creating a category or if you're segmenting a category for a business, you need the R and D done. You need technical founders. You need a lot more money to secure patents. Um, these kind of things are really a biggest challenge, right? Second thing on top of challenge is expertise, right? You can have one bright, one or two bright kids, but if they are not given the right amount of resources, not just money, uh, right amount of resources as 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 uh, technical help, as um, lab equipment that they needed, uh, as guidance they need, uh, the idea may not make it from there. Right. So imagine being a small seed that you put in and you don't have to just put water and earth. You have to put in fertilizer for this one. You have to put in a good amount of sunlight for this one to have it incubate. Wow. Um, I, I also love for like VCs to give shout outs to their companies. So could you share some examples of successful deep tech or maybe even AI focused startups that Mar 5G has invested in? Yeah, quite a few of them actually. Uh, Visway Right is one we just talked about. Uh, Zemply is a health tech company, um, we, health tech AI company we invested in. I think they're doing the Series B now, Series A, Series B. I think they're getting ready for it. Uh, so, Zemply really helps. Um, in okay, let's go back for a second. The world is boomers are aging, right? Our population is aging. We're not having enough kids. So think about that perspective. In the next 10 to 20 years, about 40, 30 to 40% 40 of world population is retiring. They need help. Uh, our parents, we don't live with them. They need help, right? We can't, I mean, especially in the immigrant community, a, a lot of time our parents live with us, but when we are working, there's no one there at home taking care of them. So imagine Zemply came out an AI-based system which monitors our parents' health if they're home, when they're home, monitors if they're taking medication, any dementia, anything that is happening with them is monitored without any camera, so no privacy issues. How uh, that includes um, giving uh, sensors, multiple sensors that goes into their room. Um, so that's kind of provide the B2C, but B2B is a lot of retirement homes in the US and, and Western world uh, need this tech because there's labor shortages so, so much. Right? We don't have nurses to take care of people. So giving one or two orderlies now can actually manage uh, hundreds of seniors in the same place if there's any issue of that kind. So Zemply is another one. Um, Agile AI is a recent company we invested in. 
agile AI is building a full on AI, AI based um, uh, product, uh, so a product testing and development platform. So all you have to do when you do user testing and product, you don't have to do anything anymore. So forget about hiring or using t testers for your platform, for your app. It's all AI does it now. So that's going to be all taken care of from now. We've done Minimines is another investment we have done that came across uh, really a small deep tech uh, platform. What they were doing, it was these kids from a nuclear scientist kids who were making this material and battery material and recycling that battery material. So wow. they came, across, came to us very new in the lab equipment, lab material. So I was like, this is interesting. We thought about how much supply chain relies uh, of, of these battery uh, material. Uh, it's produced by 18 odd countries of this lithium and other cobalt and other uh, uh, metals. But supply chain is owned by only one country in the world uh, dominantly. So, so much material goes back and forth from that country and so much carbon footprint produces. So we help these founders from lab to factory scale in India now. So, and they are just raising, they actually are closing currently their series uh, A round, which is 15 million. And government of India has invested another 15 million in them. Wow. So, yeah, so we're bringing this technology in India. Our goal is to bring it to the US next year, Mexico, and and, and slowly give it to Latam as well. So they will be building these facilities where the batteries we use, we recycle 96% uh, efficiency with zero carbon emissions. That's a great accomplishment, man. Congratulations on that. Yeah, I mean, and, I keep going, man. I think we need three hours here. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, my next question regarding like investments is like, what's like your credit? criteria or, or which criteria do you use to evaluate potential investments? Uh, at our state, generally team and integrity of a team. That's very, very important to me. So let's say like a team, market, product, and biggest one is integrity of all, all of them, founder integrity. That's very important to me personally, because I, if I want founders to just lay it out to me and don't BS me because I will find out, right? Um, I've been a founder before. I know what BS about, what people do. <laughs> Don't BS me. It is what it is. If you have challenges, talk to me what the challenges are because pretty much VCs want to know because we can help you with those challenges, right? So if you are telling me, oh, I don't have any competitor or, you know, no, you, everyone has a competitor. Like there is some indirect person that is doing this. It's a very odd, odd chance, chance that they, you don't have a competitor. Um, those are the three things we really look at. Team market and product integrity of all awesome what, what what would it be like the best insight that you can get from a founder like in the first three minutes uh, of a meeting, of in three minutes is really um i can see what they're about everything i think all i need is two three minutes with the person in general like you know we we get pitched about thousand founders pitches and every six months and we know what it's they're saying is right, what's not. Uh, a lot of times, it's I can tell if this team is capable to do this project, and not because of the qualifications, hustle, and their integrity, really. So, something something that I, I've learned, and especially like in the past few weeks, I was mentoring a startup from uh, from Ecuador, and I realized like the, the enthusiasm of the team is everything. Because they were like, hey, we want to do this with you and we want your help and we are trying to accomplish this and that. And they were so excited all the time. And they were like, like they all of them, they were like overachievers, you know? So they were overly excited all the time. And it was I, I felt their energy. And they actually won the contest. It, it was for uh whole price Ecuador. Okay. So so yeah, I mean, that was my team. They actually won. But uh kudos to myself, but still uh they did all the work and i think it's especially hard for for latino founders like to get in the same like uh tier of global founders because they they don't they don't they they cannot measure themselves with others they don't they don't believe that they're able to be at the same level so i i find amazing that that so many founders can be like overly enthusiastic and that's like a great trade for a founder. That's, especially Latam, right? I mean, Latam and, and the country I come from, the culture is very same. 
very much alike. Uh, failures are definitely highlighted and shamed. Um, in North America, Western world, you fail. It is part of the part of living, right? It's part of you fall. I consider I I tell the founder same thing. Yes, you mean your country? Maybe failures are looked down upon. Your parents, your your friends, um, they're just like, oh, okay, look, look at my son. He's doing really well. He's working with bank. Look at your son who is like trying to make it. You know, trying to work on something and failing miserably and not doing anything and living at home and all that stuff. So don't let that bother you. You do you, you have a vision, pursue that vision. Uh, failures will come. Uh, you know, you can ask your parents that how many times you fell before you started actually walking. So, you know, falling is part of walking essentially. So analogy. that's, yeah. And, and especially, as I said, you know, my culture and our culture is very similar. I think we should always encourage people as long as they're doing the work, um, you know, it's okay to fail. It's okay to think, fail, but think what you did wrong. So you don't have to do it again. So pivot if you can. Founders come to me all the time for this. And I said, I'm not going to help you until you do it yourself. I'm not going to do it for you. Go check out why you didn't work. Now you let me know why it didn't work. And then we can talk about how you can do better, right? How you can change the strategy there, but don't give up. Failure is, an, is always an option. It's always going to happen to you until you succeed. Multiple times sometimes. I mean, I think that's amazing, and especially because you need to foster collaboration between startups, investors, and especially founders. Um, and I remember when we met, you you were with one of your founders, yes. and you were you were really like into community building. I mean, you were like talking to everyone, just like making new friends. Uh, I don't know what role does community building play uh, within your portfolio. I like, I mean, I'm, as I said, from the day one, like I'm not a banker. I'm not really a, like your secluded investor. I like to mingle. I like to talk to people. I like to find what problem they're solving. And that's the joy I get out of it, right? So imagine like what, when founder is solving a problem, I like to learn, okay, something, someone is solving a problem, right? I'm not going on crunch base and looking at this. <laughs> I am meeting people and I am actually learning what smart people around me are doing. I call it, if you want to be smarter, keep smart people around you. I mean, you can read all the books, but reality is different, right? Like, you know, practice different. I enjoy my founders. I support. Uh, I also advise not only my founders. I also advise other founders. Anyone comes to me, need a help. I will always help. There may be delay, but I'll get there. If you can, if you're persistent, I will help you. That's awesome. Uh, I only have one last question before getting into the best part of the interview. Uh, what advice would you give to aspiring founders in the deep tech space? Fail, fail, and fail, and you'll succeed. <laughs> um, that's one. The real, no advice is, the real advice is find the resources near you. Find the resources afar from you. Get there. The world is going to be hard, especially if you're in, in LATAM, if you're in India. It's going to be a very difficult time, but you will make it keep persistent, try to find resources. You're not alone. People out there want to help. Just find them. LinkedIn is a great resource. Email, email, email people until they respond. Bug them, right? What are they going to do? That's great advice. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now let's begin with the best part of the interview because World Game Changers is not only about investments and VCs. It's all about getting to know who you are and getting to your mindset as, as a human, actually. So what keeps Amir motivated and passionate about fostering you know, the startup ecosystem? I really, I really love to learn new things, new technology come in and keeping me motivated. It's, it's every day morning, every morning I wake up, I talk to my team. What are we doing new? What's, what's, what's going on in the world? Let's find out. Let's research, let's collaborate. That, that kind of building a value together is what keeps me in the morning up. Like, you know, let's get excited for it. I love my job. I do what I, I, I really do love my job. It's, it's fun. It's, I, one downside part of is, you know, I'm on the calls all day long, uh, which is gonna be stressful, but I enjoy, I enjoy it besides that. What will be a perfect day for you? Um, definitely, <laughs> 
perfect day would be uh, starting enjoying my coffee, uh, going for a jog in the morning if I can, or in the evening, whichever that is. Uh, meet with founders that I love, uh, get the updates from them, solve their problems, um, and hopefully get a good news that one of my companies raising a like you know close around. That's a good day, man. I need some food at night. I'm, I love I'm a good foodie. I like a good whiskey, good cocktails. You know, you know, we enjoy. It. That's it. That's a good day for me. That's that's pretty cool. Do you have like everyday rit rituals? I do have a morning coffee, and my wife and I spend about 30 minutes in the morning not uh, doing anything else, not on the screens. Uh, we just talk to each other. Um, and after that, you know, try to go run as much as I can. Try to go biking. When it's a crappy day. I'm not doing anything. And in the evening, I just want to just you know, turn in and have a have good TV, and that's it. That's my ritual, man. Normal life. Normal <laughs> life. Crazy. Yeah, you're not like on the road like most time of the year, no? Uh, no, I used to, but not anymore. Not anymore. I do enjoy. I do enjoy calmer life. Being in the city, it was really nuts because you're always this every day. There's a one or two events going on. Uh, every day you're partying and you're like you know. I, I think being here, I do enjoy a slightly calmer life, and I can be there and within an hour when I want to be in the middle of everything. Is there like a like any special habit that you you adopted like uh, through your career that is something like you recommend to people to like follow through read 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 read, read the trends read 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 look at the new trends uh, don't follow the hype um, just read things read under the lines or between the lines that's pretty nice. Yeah. I mean, I, I try to read a book like once a month, right. but to be honest, in my case, the the best time for me for reading is while traveling. Like I, I hate airports. I hate waiting. So if I have a book, it's like a perfect day for me while I'm waiting. But I would say like mainly to my usual day, I'm just like doing so many things that if I, if I have the chance to read, I might be like exhausted. So I don't I don't do it as frequent as, as I should. There's podcast. There's there not just a book. There's a podcast. There's a trends. Pitch book articles comes out every day. Read that. Morning brew is always a good uh, way to catch Morning up. Brew. Yeah. So stuff like that. Like you know, you don't have to get a book, but just like be updated what's going on in the market and what are the trends. I mean, for VC, everything is trend. For founders, everything is trend. You should look at what the fundraising trends look like. If you're getting ready for fundraise, you look like, I mean, those market trends also dictate the value of a person you will hire will look like in the next three to six months. Are there like any ultimate life hacks that you follow? Um, life hacks. <laughs> I do like to cook and I do follow all the life hacks when it comes down to cooking. Um, I, when it comes down to Instant Pot, I've learned how to make killer Indian food in an Instant Pot. Oh, wow. that's, a skill. that's a skill. Uh, it took me a while to do it. I can <laughs> do it with one dish without without cleaning, without dirtying anything else. That's what's, life. What's What's your favorite food? Um, Japanese, actually. Japanese. Japanese. Okay. So the, yeah, the, next time, the next time that we see each other, Japanese is on me. Okay. All right. We'll have to, man, you know, that would be fun. I think we'll have a great time actually. Or we yeah. can try to go to Japan if we can. That would be awesome. Of course. Um, okay. So the, the, the whole idea behind World Game Changers is that it's kind of hard to get all the people that I admire being part of our event at Startup Grind. Um, I mean, everyone's busy, but through this, like, short 60 minutes maybe less um the whole idea is to get people to know you and i think it's a great experience because uh in my case I, i'm not i'm not shy i mean I, I reach out to anyone and i'll be just like hey man would you like to be part of this um but most people don't do it right so do you have like any advice like for like cold outreach especially as, as, as a vc i mean probably you 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 know when someone's like worth their time on on when it's not be short be specific 
uh, make sure there's something in that for them. Doesn't have to be a dollar amount, doesn't have to be some value that if you're asking someone for trade an hour of their time or 30 minutes of their time to talk to you, have some value towards it. So uh, people reach out to me, especially I get I, I, my junk folder is always like I get people reach out to me all the time. And I found myself lucky for that. I'm, I, I, I'm very lucky for that. Um, but I always, always look at everything, but I only just on things that people say, hey, I mean, I looked that you invested in this company. I really like what you've done there. I love, you know, you just do your research. I mean, you know, for some reason, people are using my experiences now on LinkedIn. Like, oh, I know you have invested in 60 companies. This <laughs> time, or I've, you, I know you have nurturing so many companies like copy paste. You that's know, that's, that's like probably that. AI. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It's definitely AI is doing all that. So my thought is like, I think go beyond just professional. See, see what the LinkedIn look like, you know, like, hey, you know, I would just stand out, stand out. That's it. So, for example, in my case, not everyone knows about this, but I love writing poetry. Okay. And I, I shared this on, on my Instagram, but not on my LinkedIn. But there's like, from time to time, I get, I mean, I get a ton of messages through LinkedIn. You right. have no idea. Yeah. 90% like of them, it's just like sales. And ten percent right. could be maybe not worthy of my time, but still, I mean, I need to like go through all of them. But every now and then, I get someone like, "Hey, man, I saw one of your poems on on Instagram. And I thought it was really insightful." And and, and they're still like asking me something about that, or maybe even about communities. I love the whole uh, theory behind communities. Right. And and that's get that get gets me like on the right mindset to like. Okay, I want to pay attention to what you have to say. Is there like any particular topic that you're really interested in that could be something like you will be like eager to connect with someone to talk about that? Um, my hobbies are five, four, four or five of them. If you were in the Bay Area, if you asked me for a good drink, I'd go. <laughs> A good good cocktail, I'd come. If you ask me for good food, I'd show, I'd, I'd join. It doesn't have to be expensive. Something good that you haven't, I haven't tried. Something unique, I will show up. Uh, or just talk to me. Hey, Amir, I I looked at your profile. I'm working on this startup. I would love your help if you give me some feedback. I get sales called all the time. I never respond to any of them. <laughs> if you ask me just for a feedback, I would love to hear your feedback for 15 minutes of your time. I would join. Most of the people would join. You don't give you share like you would asking for my feedback. Tell me what you're working on first, and why am I the good person? The good person to give you feedback. Fifteen minutes of time, people will. Silicon Valley is one of those people, one of those places where in the world, people try to create Silicon Valley replica around the world all the time. It's been doing for the last thirty years. No one has succeeded is because the mentality of people here is different than everywhere else. It's not like there's there, these people are smarter than any, anybody else. It's not like they have more money than anybody else. It's not like the foster ecosystem is not there. It's just the mentality of people. If you go to Dubai, if you ask somebody, hey, would, I'm in the area, would love to grab a coffee with you because you're such an amazing person who has done so much work in this. People in Dubai would not even miss, look at the message. <laughs> I mean, I'm just giving one Dubai, one example, right? London is the same. Singapore yeah. is pretty much the same. You can keep like Silicon Valley, like Tel Aviv is the same. But in Palo Alto, if you ask somebody that, say, I admire your work, I, I know you have done this. Um, I will, I, I'm in the Silicon Valley at that time. I would love to grab a coffee with you. Please let me know, I'll work around the schedule. 98% of the time, they will respond to you and say, thank you so much. Yeah, let me know, I'll be happy to grab a coffee. Yeah, and that's a fact. Um, you previously mentioned uh, your wife and I would love to know a little bit more uh, about like your time work balance uh like lifestyle wise and also like how do you manage your time for for important things yeah so as a as a founder it's very hard to do that initially right it's very hard to do that um but you should do that i think i if a founder tells me that i only work nine to five i'm not investing in them i'm sorry <laughs> do it. great sorry you got you're you're a founder man you got to work harder than that so you know, founder tells me I work six days a week and then on Sunday, I don't do anything. I say, okay, that makes sense. Great. I'm glad that you do that. You know, so I generally work almost all the time, but I have recently taken some time 
Uh, because, you know, imagine if your founder, I did have a founder, a banker, seven, eight years of solid, eight years of solid work like that, like yeah. work all the time. You get burned out, your body gives up. Your mind, maybe not, your body gives up. So I developed some health issues. Uh, nothing unmanageable, uh, knock on wood. But um, I realized that I think I need to take some personal time balance. It's very important, right? Especially if you want to maintain a good relationship with your partner and your kids, right? That's very important in life we live in. You made a billion dollar, but you don't have a good relationship with your partner and your, and your kids. Why do you, what, why, what does this billion dollar matter for? Like, who, who did you, who are you earning for? Right. Yeah. What's the uh, point? Yeah, exactly. What's the point? So I have recently been, I try to take note. I don't take any calls before 839 at the most. And at six o'clock, I wrap down everything by six, unless there's emergency. I'm always a little bit emergency, but normal days I wrap down after six. Uh, weekends, same. I Saturday, Sunday, Sunday in the evening, I start to work around four o'clock to catch up on Monday, so Monday doesn't feel like really cramped in the morning. So I, I this is a this is actually a really good hack. I think you asked me that before. I, yeah. So founders, if you everyone works on weekends now these days, also, if you want a good hack, start working Sunday from three to six p.m. Get a coffee somewhere before dinner. Three hours, you wrap up your entire week, last week you caught up on. And you'll be breeze in the morning on Monday. You will not hate Monday mornings. That's that's great advice. Actually, I try to like catch up to all my email during the yeah. weekend. Yeah, that's perfect. That's that's a really good time to do that. Sundays then, going on on Sundays. That's then on one day, I, I feel ready. I mean, yeah. everything's covered. Yeah, that's great. So take some time. Spend time with your uh, loved ones. Go travel. Go travel with them. You know, it's important. You can make billion dollar, but if, you, if people around you are not happy, it's not worth it. What's What's the best city in the world for you? San Francisco, man. Ah. <laughs> I'm here for it. Why am I here? Oh, okay. It was. It was. It's okay. the best city in the world. Uh, give or take. No matter what people say about it, it has the best of the best of the best of everything here. Um, the best talent, the best sharpest brains uh, in Bur in the Bay Area. One of the best foods. Anywhere and it has go. you, so. Oh well, I you know I'm the last <laughs> I'm the last person there, but uh, but it has everything that uh, that you can imagine. There's a reason people loved coming down here. People just like moving. There were there were reports came out a few 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 years that okay people in California are leaving. So good, but there are so many people that are waiting to be immigrating here. Like yeah. they don't want to go anywhere else. They don't want to go to Texas. They're coming here to San Francisco area. And these sharp brains, I mean, right last year, there was about a million uh, O-1 visas applied just in the Bay Area. Think about that. That's, That's where people want to be. Yeah. Um, do, you have any, do you have any advice on uh, burnout, how to deal with it? Yes. The real advice on that, that's a very, very good question you asked me, and I get this asked question. Um, if you feel that you're burned out, the best advice would be to take some time off for a week first to start with a week, see what you think. And if it's not catching up to you and if you're depressed and you feel any mental anxiety and others, then take some time from that startup or change the people around you. Okay. But you're burning out for a reason, right? Our, our bodies are in a fast paced world we live in. What I came to realize that, our mind is always rip and go. Even though we can push our mind, we cannot push our bodies. Our bodies has its own way of telling us that this is too much. This is too much. And we should listen to our body. Because that's, if you don't, then eventually in a year or two, you'll find out other things. That's, that's pretty accurate. Body. Yeah, yeah I, I would say that in my case, I mean, I try to work out every day. I, I try to have like a decent amount of sleep as well but the thing is that it's it's your mind if your mind doesn't stop you're not actually resting so yeah uh, i feel you your mind okay. should be yeah take some time off i think that's the only way to turn uh turn off when you go to take time off remove the um, mail application or slack application from your phone turn off notification because because you can be on vacation or something you can always go check on it but you don't need to when you, you know notifications are bothering you 
one of the best vacation I took uh, last couple of years was uh, one week in summer. And I would turn my phone or leave my phone somewhere and special or go to the area where there's no cell service. That's even better. Um, I went to the cruise in Alaska, took one whole week. It was amazing. Um, and before that, I was in Tahoe for a whole week. Um, just didn't do anything. That's the best time. That's the thing you can unplug. It's very important. I, I actually have one hack for this. So I intentionally don't charge my phone from time to time, just in order to be like disconnected. So there's nothing I can do about like anything that's happening. I don't know. I don't know anything. I mean, maybe I'm just like traveling or driving, I don't know, let's say to Miami or something. And I don't have any power on my phone. Well, uh, that could bite you in the ass sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I can charge it in the car. But let, let me hold of you, what are they going to do? <laughs> but the thing is like, okay, maybe from like in, in a time span of three hours, six hours, I, I don't have any power on my phone. So there's nothing I can do. But yeah. relax, you know, and, and that's pretty cool because uh, I think I think we we live in a such a, like a fast paced world, and okay. you cannot unplug. You cannot, especially with the Apple launching this new device. <laughs> hard, even harder to unplug, man. What the hell are people supposed to do these days? Have you have you tried it? I have. It's pretty cool, but you know, it's really cool, but it's not meant for me. I mean, I think I think it's big. I think it's hard to like to bring it everywhere. You need like a like a bag for it. And yeah, I've used uh, I've used uh, the Oculus before, and it's cool. But like they have definitely solved a lot of kinks. Uh, it's a first generation device; it'll get better. Yeah. But definitely, I, I just think it's not meant for me. Uh, mostly on the calls, I'm not needing six screens, and uh, you know. And I'm not the one cooking with the device on because it's not that hard to cook without it. Yeah, in my case, I, I, I'm happy to watch videos on my phone. Right. So, on your phone or, you know, whichever. Um, it's it's just meant for, I don't know, gamers. I think gaming would be good on that, I think, in my opinion. I mean, maybe like multiverse and AI and... Yeah, I think that would be cool. But again, it's not meant for average individual. That's why it's not average price. That's 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 so true. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't invest in that. I would probably buy a better computer instead. I would buy a better computer. I mean, you know, you can actually, I always tell people, like, you can actually use Oculus $400 device, $300 device. It's very close to what it is. It's yeah. It, funny enough, Mark Zuckerberg gave, like, a review of, of this new product. Oh, he did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was like so real, so organic. He was like, yeah, I mean, we have product. It's not that good, but it's cheaper and you can use it anytime you need it. And so, so it's a great review. You should watch the video. I think it's on his I'll uh, take a look. I think I don't Instagram, know that. Instagram page, I think. Uh, okay, so we are going straight to the last question of this nice podcast uh, with our amazing uh, guest, Amir Khan. And the last question that I, I love to ask everybody is, what's your superpower? Uh, really reading between the lines and making can, making people people more feel more comfortable around me. That's the best superpower. You you have to know what to talk to people. What do you feel about? Uh, how they're feeling? Listen, I mean, there's a reason God gave us two years and one mouth. Talk less, listen more. That's very important. And that's my superpower. I think I, I love to build in, build connection. Drop me any part of the world. As long as I speak language, I would make friends. Everybody, I'm here, Ken. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. you so much for Thank doing you. this. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us and all the great advice. I hope everyone get the chance to watch this and just like listen to it every time that they need some help, uh, especially if they're going through burnout or even just like trying to get some valuable hacks from this amazing bc thank you so much man i really appreciate it i appreciate it man thank you recording stop <laughs>